In November 1917, amid the bloodiest fighting of World War I, the field commander of France's 18th Division, P.E. Bordeaux, gathered members of his regiment to pay respects to three fallen soldiers. They were the first Americans to die in combat during the Great War. Among them was Corporal James Bethel Gresham from Evansville, Indiana. These American graves, noted Bordeaux, represent the ultimate sacrifice for the liberty of all nations, the most noble of causes. James Bethel Gresham was a child when his family moved from a one-room log cabin in Kentucky to Evansville near the turn of the century. When he was a youngster, his father died, leaving the family nearly penniless. Bethel, as he was known, left school after the fourth grade and went to work at various jobs to support his mother and three younger siblings. He only drives horses at one point, which he evidently enjoys, uh, handling a horse team. He'll work in a uh, local furniture factory for a period of time, uh, trying to earn money. By 1914, he is going to join uh, the, the U.S. Army. And then throughout his Army career, he's going to see that a way as helping support his struggling family. By the spring of 1917, when President Wilson announced America's entry into the Great War, the battle had been raging in Europe for three years. That summer, Gresham and thousands of other raw American troops were training to fight a seasoned German army in the Lorraine region of France. During this training, Gresham met fellow Midwestern recruits Tom Enright of Pittsburgh and Merle Hay from Glidden, Iowa. During World War I, the fighting that's going to be occurring is going to be very brutal. It's, it's going to, particularly on the Western Front, uh, break down into trench warfare. Basically, life month after month, living in these earthen trenches, open trenches of water, of lice, of rats, of uh, just freezing conditions in the winter and uh, sun-baked conditions in the summer. In the winter of 1917, with little training in trench warfare, the American troops were sent into a rain-soaked region known as No Man's Land to serve alongside their French allies. On November 3rd, Gresham, Enright, and Hay were stationed in a trench near the German front. At 3.30 in the morning, a group of soldiers emerged from the shadows. Assuming they were French, Gresham hollered, don't shoot, we're Americans. That was all the German troops needed to hear. Gresham was shot and killed. The following day, French soldiers returned to the battle site and discovered Gresham's body, along with those of Enright and Hay, who had been riddled with bullet holes and bayonet wounds. These were reported to be the first American soldiers to lose their lives in combat during World War I. The French are very mindful of this, and the French are thankful the Americans are there. Uh, and General Bordeaux of France, the next day when they are buried, he certainly commends their service and recognizes their service, and they're buried there uh, in the Lorraine region of France. News swiftly reached Evansville and the rest of the United States, shocking the nation. The distant war had come home to Indiana. For months, images of the three fallen soldiers were used to symbolize American sacrifice during the struggle for freedom. Their images appeared on war bond posters and their names in folk songs. Several years after the war, the bodies of the three soldiers were exhumed and returned to their hometowns. In the summer of 1921, with somber and dignified ceremony, Gresham's body was buried at Locust Hill Cemetery in Evansville. To further honor Gresham, the town raised enough money to build a new home for his mother. That home still stands today. Appropriately enough, it serves as transitional housing to help Hoosier veterans reintegrate into society after their service to the country is over. 
I think Gress represents the willingness to sacrifice yourself for the greater cause. He represented the sacrifice that Americans were willing to make. And I think that idea of freedom and, and the willingness to defend that certainly was what he represented. Thank <laughs> you.